you, Lake Bluff, Illinois, uh, for November 7th, uh, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, so now, uh, call roll, please, Mike. Okay. Uh, member Wehmeyer. Here. <laughs> member Carraway. Here. Member Dahlman. Here. A member Dittmer. Here. Here. And um, members Callahan and, uh, who else is the absent one? Um, He's the only one? Yeah, member yeah. Callahan is, is absent. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, consideration of the November 2nd uh, minutes. Uh, anybody have any comments, questions, changes, et cetera? No shoes. No? Nope. Nothing? Okay, then uh, we need a motion to approve. I move to approve the minutes of the November 2nd meeting as submitted. And a second? Second. Okay, Michael? Okay. Um, Member Waymeyer. Aye. Member Kerouac. Aye. Member Dahlman. Aye. Member Dittmer. Aye. And Chair Hunter. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Okay, um, the board uh, offers anybody that is the, has something to ask or question that is not on the agenda. Is anybody in the audience, uh, Mike, that you know? Maybe uh, out there? Uh, there is one in t attendee. So um, I'll just go ahead and tell the uh, attendees online, anytime you want to uh, speak, you can just hit the raise your hand button and I can uh, give you permission to speak. So um, right now there is, uh, is the time for anyone who wants to speak on non-agenda items. So if you want to speak, Press the raise your hand button out in the audience. So far, I do not see anybody raising their hand. I think they're all here for agenda items. Okay. So we can go on. All right, great. Okay, so the next item of business uh, is consideration of a signed permit application for Prairie Expresso at 79 East Scranton. And uh, our esteemed colleague is going to make that presentation, I assume. Yes, uh, John, feel hey, free John? to step up to the uh, no, dais. John's not here. Oh, no, he's not oh, here. Oh, John's no. not here. Oh, the John's not here. Yeah, he? right. Um, oh, the other, we have the, another John here. Okay. I will uh, promote him to panelists so he can speak. Okay, John, I... Uh, give you uh, permission to speak and or share your screen also if you would like. I, d I just want to say one thing to our AV guy, Bill, if you can hear me, Bill, in the back room. Can you press the continue button on your screen and make the picture full screen? Make the picture full screen also? Thanks. Okay, John. And I have to recuse myself. Okay, yep. Okay. So Matt recused Matt himself. Matt recused himself since yep. he is the presenter, architect, of okay. note. Right. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <coughs> so I'm not sure if we uh, somehow lost John from the Zoom here. I promoted him to panelist. He was there. I think he lost his uh, internet connection or Zoom connection at his end. I don't see him anymore. Hmm. He's been spotty the last several days. There was a big outage today. Amazon's uh, oh, yeah. web services were <laughs> out. There's a, a lot of people out today. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, but our internet at the house has been bad for the last couple of days. Ours has too. Oh, okay. It's just there's too many people buying stuff. I think Matt left town. I just hope I just hope John connects in here. 
Someone raised their hand. Do you see him? I can't see him. <laughs> I know he's there. Yep, yeah, James Murray, I gave you permission to speak there if you'd like to. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh yeah. Yes. Sorry guys, I was having technical difficulties. No problem, is this John Davis here with us? <laughs> it is, yes. Okay. Okay. So, I'm sorry, what did I miss? Okay, so we can hear you. So go ahead with your uh, presentation. What would you like to tell us about your application? So uh, we're, we're applying for a small uh, blade sign uh, to be hung in front of uh, 79 East Grand where the new prairie will be. Um, it's a two by three sign, hanging wood sign at eight foot six above the uh, sidewalk. Uh, and then we're gonna do some window treatment using a gold old school Chicago neon is what it's called which is gold leaf applied to the windows which you can see in the drawings that you have in front of you i'm assuming um we're staying within the 15 percent these are just examples um the hanging bracket is already on uh the building to the west we're going to repurpose that and stick it uh, above 79 rather than where 81, I believe, was kind of the entrance to bunk there. Um, the work will be done by Apex Signs. The glass treatment will be done by Heart and Bone, a Chicago company. Um, and the detail around the windows is just trim. Uh, the cafe on one side, bar on the other will be, re will be represented down low at about eight inches high on the bottom of the window. Uh, and then just the 79 simply stated the address there on the door. That is pretty much it. You guys got questions? The, the sign actually will be, you see the Apex sign package in front of you too. That will be a uh, quarter inch, I believe, aluminum anodized gold that has standoffs that will hit that brick header above the door with the name and then the antlers will be the same material with standoffs as well no lights um just think it's going to be a nice way to kind of get some exposure from uptown looking east you guys have any questions okay uh neil what do you think i'm comfortable with what they're doing i think it's going to be nice the only question I might have is uh, there are numerous colors of gold, some that stand out shiny, some that blend in black and, and uh, suggest <clears throat> that they might try two or three different feet where they settle on one and, uh, and put it on all the windows and the sign. But that's uh, up to them. Otherwise, I, I like what they're doing. The, the, the idea there, Neil, is to, to just be consistent with the color for sure. I think it's an improvement. It really add some class to the storefront. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it should be fun. I think it's going to look really beautiful when it's done. Julie? Um, is it on the apex sign? It's gray with black. And on, I'm sorry, it's gray with gold. And on the big drawing here, um, Matt's drawing, it's black with gold. Is it black or is it gray? Uh, it's black. Okay. All right, and it's you, not. I think that's just a printer. Okay, cool. And then it's um, it's not illuminated, so there's no worry about being able to see it when it's dark out or anything like that. No. Right. No. Okay. All right, and it meets all the the sign criteria and the sizes, so it does. I'm good with it. Yep. Looks nice. Thank you. 
I'm, 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 like you. <clears throat> I, I'm liking it. I really like the, uh, the the sign hanging over the sidewalk. I think that's uh, that's just very cool. It's just it's already it's already a, a neat uh, logo anyway. Um, so I think that's that's going to add add a lot to that building, which is sort of a plain building anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good job. Um, Thank you. I don't know if anybody's noticed, um, but the existing stone face up there, if you look really close at it, you can see the word post office. Originally, yeah. And originally this used to be the post office. It's pretty hard to make it out yeah, it's anymore. It's pretty hard so now. We're losing some history, but not much. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, there, there was... Go ahead, Jen. I was going to say that the original ceiling, I believe, is still from the post office. Um, and so we wanted to play off that, you know, and keep it somewhat historical and somewhat, um, you know, a blend between the, the, uh, the, the classic and the new. Okay. Do we need a, yes, we do need the uh, motion. Uh, can I just make one comment? This does, the Apex drawing does say 91 East Scranton on the corner up here. Not that that makes a difference. We all know it's for 79, but I'm just to make sure it's clear that it's for 79, not 91, okay? Okay. All right. Good catch. Yep. Yeah. I don't know where there's 91. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, the motion, please. Make a motion to approve the sign as presented. Second. Second. All right. Okay. Uh, Member Dolman. Aye. Member Dittmer. Aye. Member Waymeyer. Aye. And Chair Hunter. Aye. Motion passes four right. to zero. Thank, thank you, John. When are you going to open? I'll let Matt know we're done. Yes. Uh, thank you. The uh, <laughs> stake in the grounds January twenty first. We're trying to hit that date, so. Okay, good. Thank you much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Next, the uh, consideration of a sign of, of a oh, oh, public hearing to review site plan for Shore Acres Golf Club at... Uh, 16, what was that, 15, 1601 16. Shore Acres Road. Yep. Um, and uh, so Nick Patera from Tusca is here for Shore Acres. Nick. Uh, hi, Nick. Since this is a public hearing, I have to open it as a public hearing, I have to swear you in, Nick. Um, let me see if I can remember this. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, on the testimony you're about to give? So yes, say I, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. All right, have at it. Thank you. Uh, we're here tonight. Uh, Shore Acres has uh, ob obtained the property, the 18 plus acres, that was just south of their existing driving range. If you've driven up Shore Acres Road, you'd see the narrow driving range uh, uh, on your right as you're coming in. Uh, what's going to happen is that they're going to be able to make some improvements. Uh, but we had to make sure we had a way to get to uh, the new uh, property. This is the old Arden Shore uh, property that we took through a subdivision uh, more than a year ago or just about a year ago, uh, where the front part of the property will be a uh, single residence and the 18-acre uh, piece that Shore Acres uh, has acquired will be their uh, practice range. The practice range itself has not been designed uh, as of yet, uh, they have some tentative designs that we worked on, but again, what they wanted to do is to make sure they had a way to get from the club over to the 18-acre uh, piece. Uh, what we did was looked for the narrowest part of the wetland, that purple uh, uh, pattern that's on the plan is a, uh, a wetland that runs along uh, east-west primarily along Shore Acre Road. Uh, what you're seeing at the top right of that picture, just for context, is the uh, uh, part of the club uh, that's kind of cut off on the top right. 
And as you know, uh, uh, Mr. Booth's house is at the bottom uh, left side. Uh, Keller uh, next door on the lower right side, uh, lakefront, um, are the adjoining neighbors. Um, and, and by the way, I, I do want to mention Larry Booth left me a voicemail message saying he wanted the board to know that he supports this there, too. Just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Uh, that, that's appreciated. Yeah. Um, so we've spent a considerable amount of time going through the jurisdictional uh, aspects of getting across a wetland on our tiptoes. Uh, it has to do with getting through the Stormwater Management Commission of Lake County and Army Corps of Engineers as light-handed as we possibly can. So the boardwalk is actually an elevated uh, traverse that goes across the narrow part of the wetland. So Mike, I don't know if you can get to a different image, uh, sure. but it will show you. And uh, the other element that we had to consider when we came before Village with the subdivision is making sure that our pathway to get to the future practice range was sufficiently separated from the you see these two on the top right, there's two kind of strands. The one on the far right is gonna access the residential property that's the lakefront property. If, uh, if, you, if you wanna use a pointer, I think that thing up there is actually yep. a laser pointer. If you have, probably have to press an on button. Yeah. Oh, cool, right. good, thanks Mike. Uh, um, this is gonna feed the, the residential property that's to the east, the lake is over here, and then this was important to separate so we don't have a conflict. The elbow to the Arden Shore Road is right about here. Uh, and so this would be the, the uh, a gravel path initially. And then as we get to the wetland, uh, this, part, this part of the property is owned by Arden Shore. That's their practice range there presently. This will be a gravel path leaving the asphalt road, going to a straight boardwalk, going across the wetland. So it's the shortest uh, distance that we can get and then we're going to let it just sit once it gets across there until we get the practice range designed. Once the range is designed, which has to do with shaping, grading and such, that will come back before uh, the commissions and the boards uh, so you'll get to see that. So this is basically just a request to consider the, uh, the boardwalk itself. It's 10 feet wide. It's 150 feet long. It's supported on driven piles. Uh, these will be uh, cleanly driven into the soil down to a, a sufficient depth. We've had soil engineering and structural engineering testing this out. So the, uh, the boardwalk will be, as I said, suspended above the wetland and the vegetation, the water flow will continue to go underneath it. Uh, so this has all received the approval from uh, Army Corps, S SMC, uh, to allow this to happen. So you're seeing the boardwalk, uh, the blue portions on my, uh, on the screen. Come on. Okay, uh, this is the gravel path. I brought a sample to show you. It looks like gravel. Uh, and then this is the boardwalk. It looks like wood. Uh, and then this is the end of the uh, gravel path and the boardwalk meets it and then as we get into the design for the range itself, then we'll continue the gravel path to the practice tee. Um, I've brought some samples, but that's, that's essentially, and I'm sorry, that little picture on the lower right is essentially what we're making. There's a curb on each side. The curb is actually just a, a four by four with an airspace between the decking board. Everything is a southern yellow pine with a clear preservative treatment. Uh, that we're using. And then the parts that are hidden underneath uh, the metal stirrups that hold the uh, beams and the metal posts uh, will be essentially tucked underneath uh, the overhang of the, uh, the boardwalk. So that upper picture is the cross section. It allows for two-way uh, traffic. Um, uh, this is for light vehicles only. Uh, not even their mowers, uh, the big range mower uh, will not be going across. This is just for golf carts, uh, maybe smaller uh, uh, maintenance vehicles, but we're going to prohibit any other uh, large vehicles from going over. Uh, so what you're looking at is a cross section uh, at the top view. Um, this is a linear section as if I'm coming up the ramp and then I'm gonna travel this way. There's this little curb 
anybody who's seen a golf course bridge might find this to look somewhat familiar. Sorry, what's that? What I was saying was if you've seen a bridge in a golf course, you might find that this looks somewhat familiar. Oh, okay. uh, we intentionally kept it only 30 inches off the ground, so we didn't have to have a crib-like uh, uh, enclosure. It's really going to be a dramatic uh, experience going through the woods. That woods is a pretty dense uh, woods before you get to the range, so there'll be a, a bit of a, uh, I'll say, emotional kind of an experience leaving uh, Shore Acres Road, going through the woods, and then opening up to this new range. I think that this is all in keeping with the with the dynamic and the drama of, of uh, well-earned that the club has. So that's essentially the, uh, the design uh, that we have. Uh, Bully and Andrews is the general contractor who's quite capable and has helped us get through uh, pricing as well as the logistics for uh, testing the soil and um, uh, making sure that we've got the proper bearing uh, weight um, and so they're anxious to go while, while the ground is still dry and not underneath uh, a blanket of snow just yet, um, but we have to go through village approval. Um, I do have a couple samples if you're interested. It looks like wood, it looks like gravel. Hang on. <clears throat> These were sitting out in the cold, so. Uh, put your phone in splinters. That looks like wood. This is uh, a limestone crushed uh, gravel. If anybody wants a sample, <laughs> <laughs> so fill my pockets. I'm happy to Thank you. About it. Uh, I can conclude the presentation by saying that uh, once we get through village approval, we'll be working on. Uh, staging uh, that will come off of the old Arden Shores uh, where the school once was. Uh, that's where all the uh, construction access will come from because it's a vacant piece of property uh, now. And uh, that the uh, logistics will all happen off of Arden Shore Road. First will happen with the pipes, uh, uh, the piers uh, being uh, set this over this next winter season. Springtime will be the uh, beams, joists, and decking. So that's that's the essence of of the of the boardwalk. So I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, I don't believe I have any questions. I think it looks like a good solution to get through and uh, have an access that you need. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know they need a a nice driving range, and it's very fortunate that they're going to have a one that matches the esteem of the club so that's congratulations on that I, i'm just curious on the use of gravel versus an asphalt for the drive up to the boardwalk was that a we environmental about decision it. or right we have a transition potential at the departure from shore acres road there might be a little bit of asphalt that allows you to turn and make that uh, turn the rest of the trails on the course are the same gravel okay and so Managing, maintaining, maintaining, and and uh, supplementing it will be with the same gravel. Okay, great. That's all I have. Thank you. Three. Um, I don't have any questions. If I'm, if it seems to accomplish what it tries to, which is to be low impact. It's very straightforward. You. Yep. Don't have any additional questions, but uh, I think it's a nice presentation. I think uh, it'll do the job. Thank you. I appreciate your comments, your thoughts. It's, it's, it's great. It's straightforward. It's hard to do. It'll have it'll have a little bit of fun factor in it still. So, we, uh, the ground does have a little bit of undulation, so if you see the long profile, there'll be a little bit of whoops and then whoops and like this. So low key fun factor. Are those helical, the helical piers, is that the one that's driven by main, getting to a PSI? You know? two, two different things. Helical pier looks like a corkscrew. Right. Uh, we talked about using those initially, mm -hmm. and we found that the driven piling mm -hmm. is less intrusive, and it just goes almost like pushing a, you know, right. a popsicle stick in. Yeah. And so they, they use that to just push into the soil. Okay. Um, so we looked at, at helical pier 
as well as driven pipe yeah, filings. You. Okay, anybody else have any, any thoughts? It's everything you could possibly ask is, is here. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, if anyone out there on Zoom wants to uh, speak or comment, uh, please hit the button to raise your hand there and I'll give you permission to speak. No? I don't. Uh, no one is. So, okay. there are your further items. Well, then uh, let's move this forward. Uh, so, we need a, uh, a motion. I make a motion that the uh, proposed golf practice facility be approved as submitted. It's, it's the to, bridge. To recommend to Village Board. It's recommend, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Re recommend. We uh, recommended. <clears throat> That's correct. Second? A second. Mike? Okay. Uh, Member Waymeyer? Aye. Member Kerouac? Aye. Member Dahlman? Aye. Member Dittmer? Aye. And Chair Hunter? Aye. Okay. The recommendation passes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nick. Yep. Yes. Should we leave the samples behind for Christmas gifts? No, you can <laughs> take those. Um, and, and Nick, I assume you want the next available Village Board meeting, which is Monday evening, right? Yep, I'll put on for that. I don't think you need anything for that meeting. Um, no, I mean, just someone should be there to answer questions, but I've put everything I put in the packet for uh, tonight will be in for them. Samples? No, I probably, we probably don't need samples for that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next is the uh, Verizon. Uh, yep, so I think we have um, two people from Crown Castle here and I will uh, give them permission to speak. So Jason and or Susan, you have permission to speak. Go ahead and uh, make your presentation. If you want to screen share, you can, otherwise we have you know, your submission on paper here. Hi, good evening. Can you confirm that you can hear me okay? Oh yeah. Yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much for, for having us here tonight. Um, my name is Jason Krolovitz. I'm with Crown Castle. Uh, we are uh, owners of the tower at uh, 45 East Center Avenue. Um, Suzanne Kinglin, my my colleague, is also on the on the call. Um, and we are here representing Verizon, um, our customer who's interested in modifying their existing facility on the tower. Um, they currently have an antenna facility at the 99 foot elevation of the tower, and they're looking to remove and replace six antennas, um, add three additional antennas and swap out uh, radio units and some associated cabling. Um, there's no increase to the height of the tower. Um, there's no um, modifications to the ground facility that would impact the size of the footprint. Um, and there's no uh, excavation that's going to be happening outside of the tower. It's a pretty, pretty simple um, modification project. Who's got a question? Or comment. Anyone? Will the new equipment increase electromagnetic waves emanating from the tower? Uh, Can no. I repeat that question. Re we go repeat the question. Oh, I think. sorry. Will the new equipment increase electromagnetic emanations from the tower? No. Okay. Anybody else? I have something I'd like to confirm, and that's that uh, from where the new antennas are going down to the ground, there will be no wires on the exterior of the tower? No, everything should be wired internally within the tower. Okay, thank and you. The, and the, the equipment, um, the new equipment that's being installed is all going to be painted to match. Uh, what the existing conditions. I see we do have um, two questions typed in uh, 
an online from the public, I think from John Davis. Um, he asks, what frequencies are you deploying on the tower and at what power levels are you going to operate these new antenna? So frequencies is approved by the FCC. So all upgrades uh, moving forward are approved for 5G. And this is an eligible facility request submission. So we would be covered under 6409A uh, per the FCC guidelines. Thanks. Is there a couple of other questions? He, uh, he, he is asking if you know the specific frequencies in gigahertz. Uh, so that would be within the customer to uh, provide. And again, that's a overreach and a, a request of a EFR. But if you guys as a panel want to request it on the back end, um, you could. But again, it's an EFR submission covered under 6409A. Uh, our customers can't submit uh, for frequencies outside of what the FCC allows. Okay. Do you know maybe in general what uh, what cell towers operate at for frequencies? Maybe that's more the the question the uh, the public is the guy from the public is asking. So I think that's an overreach at this point, um, based off of the FCC regulation. But it's it's not that we were trying to regulate it. I think. Um, the gentleman from the public was just asking for a point of information out of curiosity, perhaps, or something. I, was just I mean, out of curiosity, out of curiosity, we can, we can, out of curiosity, we can go back through um, the FCC's law to be able to provide that. It's not above. Okay. And the, the frequency should be also within the construction drawings, too, I believe. Okay, thanks. Is that it? Yep. Okay, this is way beyond our technical ability to analyze, at least mine. Oh. <laughs> I have no additional questions or comments. I have no questions or comments. Okay. Did you have anything else? No. Neil? It looks fairly similar to what's already there, so. Yeah, it does. It does. And as long as things aren't going down the outside, you know, we yeah. made the tower bigger so that wouldn't happen. Okay, then we need another motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the application as presented. Second. I second. <coughs> Michael. Okay. Um, Member Dolman. Aye. Uh, Member Dittmer. Aye. Uh, Member Weimar. Aye. Member Fairwark. <coughs> Aye. And Chair Hunter. Aye. Okay. A motion passes. It's, it's okay. approved. Thanks. All right. Okay, next is a discussion of potential awning at 38 inch center through 57 East Scranton. John, is that you? Uh, that is you there. Huh? <laughs> um, so, can I start? Um, the idea would be to, uh, to begin where the other door seating area is um, and add several awnings um, around the building for all the places, for all the food and beverage um, uh, places along the side of the building. Um, so starting with our corner um, and then working down to um, where, uh, where Bonk is um, and where John's new bar is gonna be um, and then down um, on the Bluffingtons. Um, the idea behind this, um, when we built our place this, this year in West Lake Forest, we built a permanent awning um, we overhang our seating area by a couple of feet, and then we put um, a small three foot tall kind of solid piece of fabric fence around it. And what that created was an area where when it was raining, we would still have customers filled with a patio outside. So literally every day that it rained, except for one, when it rained sideways, um, we had a full patio when every other restaurant was, uh, was closed from their outdoor dining because nobody wants to eat in the rain. <laughs> um, 
So the idea with, with this is, uh, number one, to provide a little protection from the rain and, and, and encourage people to spend time outside at our eating and drinking places when it's not perfect weather. We generally have a, a, a difficult time with that now. If it's uh, less than 65 and, uh, and more than 85 um, and there's a little bit of sprinkle, a lot of customers will kind of stay away. So we want to encourage them to come out when maybe the weather isn't perfect and we live here. So we have lots of days when it's not quite perfect. Um, and then uh, a secondary option would be to add um, heaters um, into the same structure and provide warmth for some of the nights that are cooler um, during the season, which we've also done at our place in Westlake Forest. Uh, what it's allowed us to do is um, we basically have eight to nine months of constant usage um, at that restaurant out there. Um, whereas um, in Lake Bluff, we get about five months of, of warm enough weather for customers to sit there and then we lose whatever the 20 or 25% of the days when it rains. Um, so uh, this has the chance to almost double the amount of usage days that we would have um, for all of our eating and drinking places um, on this block. Um, and obviously we wanna do things that are, that are done well and, and, don't be, and, and are not an eyesore with the community. So uh, the awnings are being designed to cantilever out from the building um, and to not have any post supports in the bottom. Um, they will all be structurally designed to handle um, and, and at a certain angle to handle weight from snow um, and rain and they would be permanent structures but they would have a thin profile and a nice light airy feel to them a very european feel um, so they wouldn't have just lots of heavy structure kind of supporting them also would keep the area open for snow cleaning and things like that um, in the uh, uh, in the in the winter time uh, when we have to you know snow plow and things like that so um we're just trying to get general feedback on, on, on kind of what everybody feels and thinks about it. Um, we're obviously trying to you know, increase um, usability, um, create something that looks beautiful in town um, and allows the restaurants and bars um, and, and sandwich shops and things like that to stay open a little bit more and have more seating for customers. Um, we, we, for the last two seasons now, we constantly have customers asking us to find new ways uh, for them to sit outside. Um, it is, a, it, it is a, a constant daily thing. Um, and when it rains, you generally will all stay away. When it starts to get cold, the same thing happens. So we're trying to find um, a solution to kind of mitigate, uh, mitigate some of that and increase traffic. Um, questions? What is the profile of this, John? Is it, is it so this? we're aiming for it to be um, the, the base of the of the of the unit would be about eight feet off the ground um, so it's plenty of clearance for everyone and equipment right. and things like that but it's also not too tall if it's too tall then it won't work very well to keep rain off of us um, the uh, the um, elevation profile we're aiming to be right around two feet um, but the architects will tell us uh, what the structure what the actual angle needs to be um, and and, and kind of how high the profile will be um, based on the structural needs for um, for the for the depth of each of the units and what was the depth of it uh, so on right now, it's uh, we're shooting for 10 feet on the north side of Scranton and eight feet uh, around the curve of, of the Center Avenue side where the other door is at Inavazi. Um, the, the, the sidewalk on that side is a little bit narrower, so we'll shoot for a narrow one. But um, the awnings will, will match the profiles of the buildings um, and they will be built to curve around um, the curved sections of the buildings. And also they'll be integrated um, into various areas depending on exactly which awning it is so that uh, so that the, the horizontal um, profiles um, all match well with the architecture of the building. And that'll all be done and presented in, in full renderings and full detail at, at an actual formal presentation. We're just trying to get a general idea. If everybody says we hate it, then we'll have to go back and figure something else out, so. Julie? Does the awning, does an awning like this, would it meet the code or is this like beyond the code somewhere else? Well, it would require a, a special license to overhang the right of way, but it does, um, you know, it, it doesn't violate the code, but it's just that it would be overhanging village property. So it would require the special license. The height does seem to, uh, you know, meet the uh, the seven foot six minimum that's in the sign code for overhanging signs. So that, that part seems to be okay. Okay. And then, do, have, has there ever been, do you guys know, has there any been, ever been anything like this out there before as far as something that's wider and continuous that goes all the way along? Not, I feel like not there's been, been this wide, no. Not we've, this wide. Had, we've had awnings and awning issues for 40 some years. Uh, and, you know, there's a continuity about this, whether, you know, at least visually 
that, that sort of ties all this together, but it is out there uh, as far as width goes. I love the idea of it and um, being able to be out there all the time, especially with my dog when it's wet outside. Um, <laughs> being able place to, go to hide hang for out sure. with him. Yep. <laughs> um, that obviously you do something for lighting underneath there. Um, as Absolutely. Years, yeah. right? um, I think that you are going to lose some of your light inside your store, but that's obviously your you know deal if you're okay with losing lighting inside because of blocking. I know we're on the north side there, but still, it looks yeah, like it'll be a little of the natural light. Um, obviously, we don't get any direct sunlight over there, so. Um, right. Our building blocks all the direct sunlight, or 95% of it. And then my only other thing is, I think, with the circulation on this, the sidewalk, um, just in this one sketch here, you know, the awning goes all the way up to the tree well, I think. And so, you know, the way that the tables are shown here, you're kind of going to be wiggling in and out if you're walking along, trying to keep those uh, tables underneath the awning. And so now it's not necessarily there for the people to be walking underneath it, but people don't typically walk all the way up against the um you know against the curb so it's just i think that there's something to consider that there's that's yeah. going to be something that's going to be an issue yeah when we actually opened the restaurant originally we had a fence along that we were required to have a fence that actually blocked off about 11 feet of the sidewalk and so people would just walk um on the five feet on the outside of the curb um down the curb we had that for the first probably three or four years mm -hmm. um, of the restaurant's existence so I, I think it's an interesting idea. I think I'd be supportive definitely of looking at the additional detail that was presented and how that would really look um, probably in 3D as you Absolutely. look at it along the, the building because it's going to change the way the building looks. Definitely. And, um, you know, we don't want to be afraid of change, but at the same time, it's going to change the way things look. So people want to see what exactly what that looks yep. like. And we've spent, we've been working on this. Um, we started with the we started the idea of, of just wrapping the corner within Avazi, and then it's kind of evolved over the last couple of months. Um, but we've been working on it for for the last seven or eight months now, um, with the architects and getting drawings done and things like that. So we've been designing it very carefully so that it adds to the way that our that our building in the in the downtown looks and and doesn't detract or become an eyesore or anything like that. All right, those are my comments for now. Thank you. Um, I, it feels like you're kind of taking ownership of a public right away. I know we're doing that a little bit now, but it really feels like we're going a little bit beyond, you know, it's just this incremental kind of grab. Um, you know, I do see that it, it's beneficial to your clientele, but not to the rest of the community. You know, you're forcing everybody, you know, out towards the perimeter. Um, and it, it just feels a little heavy handed right now. And I think it's going to change the way this block feels. It's, it's, it's going to kind of segregate this corner from the rest of the block. Um, it just seems very heavy. And, uh, you know, 10 feet is a, is a big ascension. I was in Deerfield today. I saw one of these on a building. It's on the side. But, you know, they ended up having, like, the plastic coming down with the plastic windows. So I can see this evolve into kind of this pure tent feel. That's not in keeping with, I think, what we want our streetscape to be. Um, I understand and I appreciate the goal because we all want to increase uh, customers and your you know, time that you can grab. Um, I, I just feel that this is, I mean, final judgment would be your final presentation, but it just feels very big for our community. You know, just, it just feels very heavy on the building and you're grabbing a lot of the public way for your, you know, for your personal use, which feels a little, you know, right now you're splitting the sidewalk with some people on the perimeter and then some towards the interior and people are walking in between, um, which I feel is the right way to use that sidewalk instead of forcing the people's right away off to the edge and you taking the primary part of the sidewalk. There are a couple of issues with the way that it's structured now with, um, with it having with people running down the middle. One is kids on bikes, even though we asked them not to. Uh, we had two servers get run over this summer um, with trays in their hands from kids that are riding their bikes down the middle of that area. Um, and the second one um, happens maybe once every couple of weeks where a dog will take something off of a plate as they're walking by. Right. Um, but so it, it, it is does, a public right away, right? It is first a sidewalk right. well, our original, not your place. Our, our original permit that, that, <laughs> that we have with the village um, actually has that area um, um, blocked off for it. So. So um, we use about two thirds of the, yeah. or a little less than two thirds of the 16 feet that's that's the sidewalk. Okay, so I'm not so, and I'm not aware of your ownership of it or what you have. So I may be speaking out of turn then. So are you saying that 
Inavasi owns or has the right to the first two thirds of that sidewalk out towards the street? I'm saying that our when we when we applied originally for our permit for outdoor dining, yeah. it covers about 11 feet away from our building. Okay. That's all that I was saying. Nothing more than that. Yeah. One thing that's worth noting is that this drawing is our, our original plan for the score lines on the sidewalk, but actually as built, the score lines are, are different um, than the drawing. I, I actually like the way the score lines turned out out there, but I think it, it kind of looks like it defines a through path, you know, when you look at it now. Um, and we also, just so we're clear, we aren't proposing to use any more of the sidewalk than we currently have been using for the 13 years we've been here. It's uh, the same amount of space, the same... Um, distance of tables and things like that. We just would have people go around instead of walking through the tables. That's that's really the change. But that's also something that we can always adjust to. It doesn't it doesn't absolutely have to be that way. Why did you switch it from that to where we are now? Because of the things I just outlined. Because the public does not respect not riding bicycles down the street. It's, right. It happens a lot more consistently than I think people you know, realize. Yeah. And we've got a long straightaway, so they actually have a decent amount of speed. Yeah. And we have a blind corner that they ride around the yeah. corner on. Yeah. Um, and then um, and then it's not always the best. And not every customer likes the public walking through the dining room mm -hmm. um, as, they're, as they're eating. Some people enjoy that, yeah. and some people don't. Um, so we're just trying to adjust to that. Sure. And I'm, I participate in your tables a lot. I love it. It's amazing. I'm just trying to make sure that we always set precedents doing something. I just want to make sure that what we're doing here, if it passes that, we're allowing that then to our, you know, this will be our city then. We'll have this. Because it is a very economical way of, you know, maintaining some condition space. Absolutely. Which, which I appreciate. And, but we will be establishing a pretty big uh, statement here for the rest of the community and what they can do. And yeah, I'm, my concern is that next step where you do start putting on the, the walls, the plastic walls. Right. And I know you've seen that and it is a natural progression. Yep, I understand. Um, and so maybe there has to be some, you know. That, maybe that's kind of the line that we could that we could leave it, that it needs to be, be maintained as open air and you're not allowed to enclose it completely. That becomes to me very, as the, and this was on the side and it was very unbecoming just as the side. I can't imagine it, you know, being part of our town. Um, then it's impossible to walk through. So yeah, it would certainly be an easy thing to include with the with the with the permission for it. So that's what I have for now. Three. Um, I'm concerned about the effect on the trees. Oh, how much is going to impact? The um, right now the the edge and the bottom part of the roof line we're going we're we're having it designed so that it doesn't. Um, uh, it doesn't in, in, uh, actually touch any of the trees or touch the branches. Um, so the trees themselves should not actually come into contact with it, with any part of the, of the awnings at all. Anything else? If anything, it'll take a little more rain and put it inside the tree wells. <laughs> As the rain runs off of the edge and runs down, then it'll, it'll drop into the tree wells. Anything else, Sheree? Mm -hmm. Neil? One of the, the drawings shows what you talked about on the west side and the north side, but then there's also some red dashes in front of uh, Hub and Cycle and they're in front of Bluffington's. Yeah. Is that your thought that... Uh, yeah, so that each, every eating and drinking establishment would have a covered awning down the for the entire block. Okay. So that all of the, all of the participants of, I mean, there are six places, um, when John opens his bar, there'll be six places on this one block. And the idea would be that everyone would gain the same kind of benefit. And obviously there's, you know, two different owners of the buildings and there are different owners of the businesses. So there's a, a number of things that we would have to, to, to work out to, to put together a final plan and get everyone in agreement, which we're working on all those things now. But we wanted to, to just come here first and just get a general idea of what everybody thought um, so that we can address any of those things early um, and, and address any of the design things and things like, and, and issues like that now. Are you thinking with the canopy that there would be any 
business identification on it? Would the, the name of the of the uh, store that's underneath that section? Um, I would think so, yes. You um, do think so? It depends on exactly, um, on, on exactly where it lands. Um, if the bottom of it is, right now the plan is the bottom of it is just above where the signs are, where the current signage is in the building. Um, so it would still be visible. Um, it wouldn't be covered up. Um, but I think that each individual um, um, business would be able to, to ask if they would want that on the side or not. Um, and really, it depends on, on what you guys think, if that would be a positive thing to do or not. So. And then I guess you have to decide if, like, if, if there is lettering on there, would it be only on the skirt or would also be there there's be some graphics on the, uh, the top of the awning itself? Right. I assume it would be something that would be on the skirt. So it would be in keeping with the way that the building looks now. Um, this, the front of the skirt is about a 10 inch, um, a 10 inch high piece, which is about the height of, of all the current lettering now. Yeah. So maybe something like that would be kind of the most that I would be looking for anyway. What's the fabric? What's the awning made out of? So it's made out of a fabric vinyl. Um, it has a 25 year warranty. Um, it's weather resistant, leak proof. Um, it's a super high quality material. Um, it'll, it'll, there's actually a couple awnings um, on the building now on the, on the far south end of it. Um, but it'll be, it'll, it'll look not like plastic and it'll be kind of a, a meld of vinyl and, and fabric together. Sure, he brings up the point about the trees, what, what the audience do to the trees, what do the trees do to the audience? Uh, um, with so, the stuff that's going to fall and, you know, all of a sudden they're black and streaky and moldy and... Absolutely. So the material that we're getting is designed specifically to be underneath trees. Okay. So it's, it's, it's one of the first concerns that we talked about. Neil, did you have something else? And they'll have to be washed and maintained every couple of years like normal. So, uh, John, would it be possible, I mean, you could do all the 3D renderings and everything, but I, I'm just wondering if you, you know, I kind of go along with what Matt was talking about, overtaking the, so much of the public way, uh, to sort of build a test case, just a, just a small, small one that, that uh, lets, lets everybody actually stand under it and say, this is good, this is not so good, this is, this is too far, not far enough. What, uh, what size of, of, a, of an awning would be looking to build? Well, I mean, just a, just a section. It wouldn't even have to be the real thing. Uh, just, just a mock-up that you could somehow temporarily attach up there and, and kind of judge the distance of what it really, really feels like. And you, you might uh, find that useful yourself. Um, I think it'd be hard to build just a, a mock-up uh, to, to get because it's, it's all aluminum framed, um, and then the fabric is stretched um, and bound over it. Um, we'd have to probably build an actual section of it to see what it really is going to look like. Well, I'm talking about something. And then if we attach it to the building, then we'll be I'm just talking about something concrete. very crude that, uh, that gives you sort of the volume of what, what's there um, or what would be there. It doesn't have to be the color. It doesn't have to be fabric. It just be, could be cardboard and sticks. Is there uh, an existing one in Lake Forest that would, is very similar to what um, There is, but its shape and size is very different. Um, but yeah, the, as far as the structure itself goes um, and the material that it's covered with, yes. And that's at Everett Farms in Westlake Forest. It's where? Everett Farms in Westlake Forest. Oh, that's your place? Yeah. Yeah. Would it be, I could take a picture of the one that's in Deerfield that I saw today. Just this, and I don't know if it's the exact same, but it's very shallow, just like you, you know. So it's a very low profile, but it's probably about 10 feet out. Um, where is that? So it's on Deerfield, right across from that Starbucks before you get to Waukegan, that, you know, where the pet people, uh, yeah, you know, okay. that corner there, it's, it's in the, um, facing, uh, the Starbucks. It's, it's that corner building, the side of it facing the Starbucks. There's a blue one there. The, the Garrity Square Mall? Yeah. I think yeah. So. Okay. And is that one done with no posts either? Yeah. Yeah. So. You just get a sense of, you know, it, there isn't an, it, it's, it is somewhat imposing, you know, that's why it's just trying to get a feel for that. You know, it's a big change to our downtown to add this, you know, it truly is, you know, we worry about little changes here and there that we're yeah, concerned this is about. A big thing. This is a big, you well, would hate to make this, and I'm not saying it is, mis you know, it's a very expensive mistake if it's done. And I know you wouldn't allow it to be, but it just, there's still that possibility that it's just a big statement you know, that changes everything and permanently, you know, it's not like a seasonal thing that we're, it's a very permanent change to the way our downtown is gonna, uh, the feel of it. It's, it's, 
And I, I, I got a comment to make that uh, if you're talking about going down at the other end on Buffington's, that's a whole different architecture that's on the National Historic Register. Yeah. And so we can't just start messing around with that. Mm -hmm. um, and so then maybe it wouldn't work there. Uh -huh. Or we'd have to be, yeah, the idea was as we get further east, each of the awnings would be designed for the individual space it's going to be attached to. Um, so if it's possible to do it Buffington's, then, um, you know, we certainly want to do it. If not, then, um, you know, we're not allowed to. I really don't know what exactly what the rules are or how it would work, but um, there are differences also in the building as you go further east. So um, each of them would be designed and adjusted for the, each individual building so that they made sense architecturally. That's going to be hard to do there. Uh, I see we have some questions online. Should I yeah. get those? Okay. Um, D Deborah Digby, I see you uh, r rose your, raised your hand and uh, typed questions in. Would you like me to read off what you typed, or do you want to just uh, speak for yourself here? I clicked the uh, permission to talk for you. Yeah, thank you. It's actually David, not not Deborah. So um, just a couple of comments. So firstly, I want to commend the village on the investments they've made in the sidewalk. I think it's making a and has made a dramatic difference. And to John's point, I think it's John who spoke there. You know, I, I love the idea of alfresco dining. It's fantastic. But to echo the comments of the committee, I, I have several concerns. So uh, I understand the situation with your bar staff or, or, or wait staff in terms of you know, danger. But one of the reasons we moved to Lake Bluff was just the freedom, uh, the kids. So I think that the sidewalk should be left open for kids, dogs, uh, push chairs, uh, wheelchair access. Um, you know, I, I also think we really need to be considering the businesses east of uh, your premise. So, you know, it feels like it's very imposing. Um, I, I worry and wonder about the individuality of the businesses. And so what if a business didn't want an awning? Does that not put them at a competitive disadvantage? Would also think there would be a degree of um, blocking uh, businesses being able to advertise uh, if you're coming from the station and looking east. Uh, I do have a concern. Again, I think the village downtown is stunningly beautiful, um, which again is one of the reasons we, we, we moved here. So I do get concerned when I look at fairly expensive umbrellas that we've got in our house, they've weathered very badly. Uh, just because of the tree cover. And so um, aesthetically, I wonder on the impact uh, and look and feel of the historic downtown. Uh, and secondly, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I see blandness coming to Lake Bluff. I, I love the individuality. And so I'm not sure personally I'd want to see almost like a single brand uh, look and feel down the high street. I, I love the individuality. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I want to get your name for the minutes and I missed it. Could you tell me your sure. name again? Yeah, I'm a resident of Lake Bluff, David Digby, D-I-G-B-Y. Okay, thank you. Was there somebody else? No, I think that's it. Well, what do we, uh, John's here to get some opinions before he proceeds, right? And I, I just, and I do want to echo the, I don't want to say blandness, but that there is a homogeneity to this, if that's the right word, that is just, you know, I, we have so many restrictions that don't allow for that. And I think this is bringing that even stronger, you know, stronger statement. And I don't know if there's a way to, if this goes forward somehow, a way to kind of break it up, you know, instead of just this one big green wall, you know, or whatever umbrella going across. Um, but. I still think it's going to feel very imposing in, in our town. And but I truly appreciate your goal. I mean, I see these. You know, I was at a restaurant and they had these the igloos. They're called like right. Denver igloo. You know, they're glass and people are doing a lot, spending a lot of money to get customers throughout the year. Truly appreciate that. I just want to make sure that we're respecting the overall community also. And and like what Mr. Digby said, why we live here. We've spent a lot of time and, and money um, in this village creating larger spaces, larger abandoned spaces. This, what's just been finished is one of them. And coming down the pike for block one is gonna be another one. Yeah. And I you know my comment a couple of meetings ago or whenever it was is we're, we're dealing with four or five months out of the year and the rest of it's 
to this empty space. Mm -hmm. uh, this does help that uh, for an extra month, but at the expense of, uh, of some other uh, activities or all sorts of, of you know, visual activities and things. Um, the other thing I do like about it, though, is and opposed to what you just said, Matt, is that there's, we have had so many awning issues mm -hmm. over the last years. Uh, there's a continuity about this. It's the same building. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, so there's something about that, whether it was 10 feet out or 8 feet out or 4 feet out. Um, there's something about that. But once you, uh, it, it, does, it does create a blandness to it, too because it's, it is so big. Well, it's big and there's really no detail to it. You know, it's, a, it's going to be this huge addition without yeah. really, it's the least, you know, intrinsically worthy material, you know, on this beautiful building that's just going to create this huge band around it. I, you know, that's just in terms of architectural presence, not anything else. It's, it just seems very, you just don't want it to become unfortunate, you know. And I know everybody's going to work towards not having that, but it's just, I just hate to see this corner get wrapped in, you know, this green band. I see we do have one more person raising his hand online. Should I go to sure. him? Okay. So Mark, Mark Stolzenberg, go ahead. I've given you permission to talk there. Hey, good evening, everyone. Mark Stolzenberg. I'm at uh, 16 East North. I live about a block away from downtown. Thanks for your service to the community and allowing me an opportunity to speak this evening. I had a couple of thoughts, and you know, I, I appreciate all that uh, Mr. De Rossier has done for our community. Um, you know, certainly he and other proprietors, such as John Davis at Prairie Espresso, um, Greg at um, Mavery, and the brewery, certainly have brought a lot of vitality to our town. And I think it's important that we support our merchants every town. Um, but, you know, with regard to the plan at issue here that we're discussing this evening, I think back to this past summer when I would take my 16-month-old uh, 16, daughter, Emma, on walks through downtown. Um, she was just learning to walk, and it was a lot of fun to take her walking through downtown. And with the tables and kind of with all of the furniture um, along Scranton and along Center already, um, it was already a little difficult to use the public right of way there. And I fear that this is going to make it even more difficult for residents like me and my 16 month old daughter to pass. Um, I think, secondly, I think it would be very helpful to see a rendering of this plan. I fear that the sidewalk along Scranton and the sidewalk along Center, um, you know, heading south toward Village Hall are gonna look like tunnels in that this awning is gonna be so massive um, that it's gonna block out a lot of light and it's gonna be like, you know, almost walking through a pedway along um, a sidewalk that had been formerly bathed in sunlight, bathed in light. Um, third, I'd also like to comment uh, on Mr. Digby's uh, observation that this could cause uh, a more homogenous uh, downtown than we might prefer. I mean, for example, earlier this evening, we, we had a presenter, Mr. Davis, uh, say that he wants to hang a blade sign over his door for his establishment that he wants to open. If an awning was placed there, obviously that would have an impact on the design that Mr. Davis wants to do for uh, the new prairie at 79 East Scranton. Um, you know, I, I think that overall, while you know, certainly I understand Mr. Derossier's intentions. Um, you know, and I certainly appreciate them, and Mr. Garcia has done a great job with Navasi and, and his businesses here in town. But this may be somewhat overpowering to the aesthetic of our town, and really kind of change our main street in a way that, um, you know, permanently change it in a way that, you know, may take a lot away from in terms of light, air, and kind of enjoying the openness of Lake Bluff as it is now. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mark. Anybody else out there? Uh, no, I don't think so. No one else is raising their hand. How do we synthesize this for John to go back to think about it? 
Do we all think it's too much? Is there a consensus or not on that? Well, I've stated my, I, I, I just feel that it's gonna um, truly change the character, you know, in a, in a permanent way. We've done a it's lot, to, you know, that's my concern. So after hearing what everybody doesn't like about it, has, have any of you seen options for something like this before that you would think would solve some of the concerns that you have? Well, you know, maybe it's a section, you know, maybe it's, there's a compromise, a scale here. I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's just. Yeah, at some point the, Working where half the people get rained on and half don't is, you know, and that's I, not, that doesn't really and I work that, in practice. Yeah. And yeah. Um, also the expense of building two thirds of it is almost the same as building the mm -hmm. whole thing. Mr. Digby, were, did you want to speak again or did you still have your hand up from before? I'm not sure. I think I inadvertently still have my hand up from before. Mm -hmm. Apologies. Okay, no problem. What about a, um, uh, a temporary um, kind of set of awnings along the building that are normally um, wound up and pulled up inside in small boxes that run along the building that we can, that we can extend out when, um, when the weather is inclement, but normally they would be pulled in. Mm -hmm. Do you know any examples of those are? Yeah, I've, I'm doing one and a half. You know, we do those. They, what happens is they telescope out. So yeah. if you get like a 20 foot run, they go about 13 feet. There's a ratio to it. They're, a, it's a great design. It, you end up with a metal box that's 20 feet by you know, 10 by yeah. 10 or something. But it's a, it is a solution and I'm doing it for a residence and it's a good way to, they're tested. I mean, the wind capacity is amazing. All that is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I feel that that's, even the ones that kind of roll down, you know, a little more character. I almost want to go the other way where it's a little more character if you did it instead of this, but. Um, I don't have a hard time adjusting anything to the face of the buildings. Yeah, I know that's, you know, it's, yeah. If they I'm, were plain modernistic buildings, that yeah. it would be one thing. Yeah. I mean, it was suggested that the words, you know, it could happen on block one. Well, it's the same thing. It yeah. doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Mine's on a very contemporary home, and it kind of just fits right in. Yeah. And it just, but I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to, what a, a better solution would be uh, to solve everybody's thoughts and problems issues. Someone did. Someone said something about like the tunnel feel to it, and I think maybe you know when I think about sitting out there when it's raining and when it's crummy out. It's good, it would be awesome, but I think back to the idea of on a sunny day when it's beautiful and you're walking around and that sort of thing, it does seem like it would be make the whole thing feel dark and, and even not dark inside because that's your choice if you're okay with that, but it's going to make the whole bottom half of the building dark yeah. too underneath it. It's going to be hiding the whole bottom half of the building and it's going to be much less visible. It's too. already so, on the north side. Yeah. And I think even for the patrons, you know, like if I'm like, we're out there two nights a week, sometimes in the summer, and it is lovely to sit out there, and the, you know, and that's the problem with it being permanent. You're going to lose that effect. It's, um, yeah, it's a tough one. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I have no other questions. <laughs> you have any other questions for me? Had, or? I wish we had some, some, uh, yeah, some helpful <clears throat> answers. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, John. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right, what else we got here, Michael? We've, we've just got the meeting dates for next year. We need to vote to approve those, if everyone's uh, good with those. Yeah. yeah. 
Does that July 5th ever present a problem the day after the 4th? I mean, I know Monday would be the holiday, but are people still returning from vacations? Is that going to be an issue? Or? We've always moved that. Yeah. We, yeah we, we've had that issue before, and we just jump a, a week back, a week later. Yeah. So. Do we want to just do that now, or do you want to do that closer to July? Well, we can do it now, then it's settled. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We can we can make a motion with that change. There's a there's always a uh, chance. I don't know for certain whether we'd have a conflict with having this room, but yeah. that's okay. We can go ahead and make the motion. Yeah, we can change it again between now and then if there if there is a conflict for this room. Okay. So, so we, we have to want add, to make that motion. We have to add seven to that number. Can we yeah, do that? Yeah, to go to July 11th. And you won't be here. You'll be down in the sunny southwest. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes well. Yeah. Do you need a motion? Did, that, did somebody make yep. that motion? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the schedule for 2022 with the change of July to push it out one week. I second. Okay. okay. You can vote on that? Yeah, we'll okay. vote on that. Uh, Member Dahlman. Aye or nay? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay. Member Dittmer. Aye. Member Boymeyer. Aye. Member Carraway. Aye. And Chair Hunter. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Has everybody had a chance to look at the uh, handiwork outside? Yeah, it's good. Walk up and down. It's looking yeah. good. Yeah, they did it. It really, Very I really like. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, this that, center, that, that really nice. is nice. That really is nice. Yeah. The rest of it's sidewalk. Yeah. But this has got some sculpture to it. Yeah. I heard there was pushback. I don't know if this is a discussion time for the one way from the business meeting. No. Any no. So is that, where are we on that? Do you know? Well, I think the village board has got to make the final decision on that. I don't, I don't think they have yet. Okay. Or, or did they? I, now I've forgotten. I'm sorry. Wait, what's the question? Whether they're going to go with the one-way uh, thing out there. Oh. You know, think during one of the... they, they, they had a meeting of the whole, yeah. and right. I think they were kind of leaning that direction. But I don't know that it, they, they didn't. Nothing was decided. It's just a discussion of what, what they saw. Right? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. You know, I want to say, I think they approved it, but it still is a concept plan, it's a, so it's not the final. approved it as a concept plan. Yeah, right. So the doing the one way, I think, was approved as a as the concept plan. Okay. But yeah. the issue, I think, I saw the, uh, the police car by Bob Rubb's uh, driveway entrance. Oh, yeah. Uh, yesterday. Yeah. You know, I mean, that is an issue that yeah. I never would have thought about. No. And, uh, it's not a good one. Uh, I don't think he's. I don't think he's kidding about that. Yeah. Uh, but did we discuss it coming in versus going out the one way? The way it is now. Yeah, but I'm just hearing rumblings from some business owners that it should be coming in the one way and not going then out. Then the, the, if it's coming in the one way, then it defeats the purpose of yeah. slowing down traffic. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Big changes to Lake Bluff. Okay. All right. Well, should we do a motion to adjourn? We can do that. I move to adjourn. I second. All in favor, All say in aye. favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, Mike. Sure. So what do you know, Matt?